Welcome to part 2 of my tutorial series where I create an animated low poly model for Unity from scratch. This series is a top level view of my entire workflow. So we will be covering a lot of different disciplines and software along the way. I'll try to talk you through my process, thoughts and experiences while also mentioning common pitfalls and misconceptions along the way. I'll also try to offer some tips and suggestions, of course. If you want to support the making of these types of videos, you can find me on Patreon, link in the description. Anyway, as usual, feel free to leave any thoughts, suggestions or feedback in the comments below. And yeah, it's time to dive into part two, 3D modeling. Okay, in Blender, start by getting rid of all the starting items and bring in the concept art. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is the difference between hard and soft surface modeling. What I'm about to do here in Blender, and keep in mind that I'm being kind of general, is called hard surface modeling. Essentially, if you are modeling something man-made, hard surface modeling is your best bet. And largely it's about modifying and managing general geometric shapes, so cubes, spheres, toruses, and so on. And, well, this is generally best done in a standard 3D modeling tool, such as Blender, Maya, 3D Studio Max, uh, etc. Soft surface or organic modeling, on the other hand, is best suited for making things that are alive. Well, or undead, I guess, you know, you know what I mean. Creatures, characters, etc. When creating these types of terrifying creatures, your best bet is to use a sculpt sculpting tool. I prefer Quadon, since I love uh, working in VR. But if you prefer sitting in front of a monitor, then Blender also got some great uh, sculpting tools. Industry standard is probably uh, ZBrush. Anyway, I decided to start with the hard surface modeling in Blender before exporting it over to Codon in order to sculpt the mutant around the tank and grenade. Now, Blender is great for the standard sort of uh, poly pushing, which is all I need for objects like the propane tank and grenade. Though, if you want to get more fancy making spaceships and tanks, you know, more complicated things. Your best bet is to get some plugins for Blender. One of the most popular is Hardops with the box cutter. Myself, I use Fluent, which has some lovely pipe and cloth tools as well. It's what I used in order to model this here Smexy Starship, which is rendered in Unity for a um, other project. Okay, back to the task at hand. Modeling a propane tank. So, do I have any suggestions besides what I'm showing here? Well, it's a hard bit to mention specific hotkeys and so on. I've used Blender for <laughs> literally decades. And, well, Blender used to be this kind of odd duck as far as hotkeys goes. And since I got those burned into my brain, well, <laughs> whenever Blender had a fancy update, making things more streamlined and in line with industry standards, I just went, cool, now keep all the old hotkeys, I need them to live. And so here we are. I'm still using the old settings, which for new users well don't make much sense but as long as you make sure that the spacebar or whatever they use these days bring up the search field you can just go by the names i use and search for them and if the new uh, feature is that you can right click the tool in the menus and add them to your quick tools which is what i'm using all the time 
I just press Q in order to bring up a context sensitive menu for my favorite tools. Okay, um, if I had to be more specific, I'd say that there are a couple of features in Blender that you need to be familiar with, as in use them constantly. For example, proportional editing. When you are in edit mode, a little circle around a dot appears in the top bar. This allows you to switch proportional editing on and off. In short, this allows vertices to affect other vertices when you move them around. Well, edges, faces, whatever you're working with. You see here how I'm using it in order to turn a circle into the little turning knob, valve, whatever you call it. The thing you rotate on top of the propane tank in order to allow gas to fl flow through the nozzle. Something else that you need to be familiar with is the loop cut and slide tool that I just used in order to create loops around the length of the tank. The, uh, the reason that I did this was in order to have a denser geometry for the tank when I add a texture driven space modifier which is a great way to add a bit of deformation to a model. In this case making the propane, propane tank a bit uh, dented, not quite so pristine. Hopefully this makes it look more unstable, uh, a little more dangerous. What I've made now is the high poly model which is usually the order you create assets in. First the high, then the low poly models. In order to get a low poly model I simply add a decimate modifier in order to bring the triangle count down to a reasonable level. Remember all those uh, loop cuts that I did earlier. Okay, uh, with the tank in place it is time to craft a grenade. It's pretty easy actually. All you need is a couple of components from your garage. Start by then this refines the powder so it can be used with the in order to so since the grenade is around I simply start with a sphere. UV spheres are better for these things than icospheres since the loops make it easy to modify the geometry for our needs. Here you can see how I take the circular loop, scale and merge vertices in order to make a transition into a more square shape which I'll use in order to model the fuse assembly on top of the housing. With the uh, fuse assembly shape in place, I simply extrude the loop upwards. Another great modifier to use when hard surface modeling is the bevel modifier. This allows you to add more detail along all the edges without actually having to deal with a mess of vertices when modeling. The simple materials you see me use for both the tank and the grenade are only there to give me a rough idea of how all the different parts work together. These materials won't actually be used later, rather I will be making all the uh, materials in Substance Painter, which is a lot easier to work with than the uh, Blender node editor. In order to create the angle top of the fuse housing, I simply extrude the center and then select the opposing edges and breach them with new faces. I think the whole key is the same these days. I just hit F, try it, what can go wrong? <laughs> the hinge pin is just a simple cylinder with a bevel modifier. Same for the safety pin. The whole grenade is pretty simple actually. The only part that ended up being somewhat complex was the safety lever. Still, it was just a matter of combining and reworking a cylinder 
and a cube. Okay, so that's pretty much the hard surface modeling then. I mean, the end of the safety pin is just a torus where I've scaled down the inner radius. So, yeah, a bit more playing around with vertices, getting the shape of the, uh, what was it called again? safety lever I had to look up all this part on <laughs> Google I have no idea I'm not an expert on grenade uh, anatomy <laughs> go, go away did they never mind So, yeah, that uh, looks like a grenade to me. Right, just need to add the circumference hula hoop. There. So now I just need to get a low poly version of the grenade as well. Put uh, both of these together and uh, export them as uh, FPX or OBJ, I never remember which one. Get them into Quadon and in the next part I'm gonna start sculpting the, the mutant. Yeah, so thanks for watching part two of my whatever this <laughs> is turning out to be. Um, I'm learning a lot about video editing and I'm having a lot of fun. So yeah, I guess that's something. But um, feel free to leave me any comments, suggestions, feedback and so on. And... Maybe I'll see you in part three. Bye. <laughs> oh boy, it's way too late. I need to go to sleep. <laughs>